The Tracks Ahead crew travels to Argentina for a rail adventure through the vast expanses of Patagonia. This fantastic trip takes them all the way down to Tierra del Fuego, which literally means the land's end. Off in the distance, a lone, narrow-gauge steam engine is the only sign of life. It's certainly not what most people envision when they think of Argentina. But this is the Argentina of diesel and steam engines that chug through the vast expanses of Patagonia. The La Trochita, a truly rare narrow-gauge train. And finally, El Tren del Fin del Mundo, or the train at the end of the world. We start in the town of Bariloche, in the foothills of the Andes, and a gateway to the Patagonian region. Nestled between two lakes and surrounded by a national park, the scenic town is known for its skiing during the summer months of July and August. Here we board the broad gauge Tren Patagonico, pulled by diesel engine for the 122 mile trip to Yacobachi. We wind through rugged countryside and high desert. The arid territory has few trees and even fewer people. What you do see here are huge ranches that raise sheep, cattle, and horses. As you look out the window, there's absolutely nothing. It's just pure landscape. And once in a while, you see wild animals. And once in a while, you see uh, sheep and cattle. Throughout the trip, the tour we're on offers frequent stops for photo ops. Of particular interest are bridge crossings and the junction where the broad gauge joins the narrow gauge for a few miles before our next stop, Yakobachi. The small town of Yakobachi, named for an Italian engineer who helped build the line, is the northern terminal of the famous Escal line. Here we board La Trochita, our narrow gauge steam engine. In the 1920s, uh, the government of Argentina embarked on a very uh, extensive uh, program of uh, building railways in the Patagonian region. The idea was to literally build thousands of kilometers or miles of track uh, throughout this desert region in the south and uh, to link it together with the already existing private railways in the Pampa region to the north. In uh, the early 20s, they delivered a very, very sizable number of locomotives and cars and huge amounts of rail. And Despite this uh, rather uh, elaborate plan, they actually only built a very small part of it. This train, which was built to haul sheep and wool, now caters to the tourist trade. And the people who find their way onto these coaches are often die-hard rail fans and photographers from all over the world. Hey, I'm from uh, New Zealand, and uh, we're sort of just semi-retired now, and we're doing our last fling of the steam engines around the world. You know, it reminds me the train in France as a child, this is what we had. When we traveled through France, this is what we had to put up with. So I'm afraid, I'm, I kind of am afraid a little bit that uh, unfortunately, maybe Argentina will not be able to keep this program. We have got rid of all the uh, uh, steam locomotive in France. There's only a few left and they've become private. It's something that harkens back to kind of Nevada at the turn of the 19th or the 19th, 20th century. Um, it's just like narrow gauge. It's the, the closest thing you can get to that. It's the, the wide open, there's nothing there. It's just uh, absolutely barren with this one little teeny train running through it. It's, it's wonderful. It's the closest thing you'll ever get to being in the 19th century. Throughout the trip, the snow-peaked Andes are always glistening in the background. Small towns are few and far between, but even the hearts of the most jaded rail travelers melt at the sight of local children smiling and waving as the train passes. The staff and crew are among the most dedicated in the world. No, I will never get tired of running a steam engine. For me, it's an honor. I'm very proud of being up there. And as far as I can go, I will go in this life. Back at Bariloche, we take a short excursion aboard El Historico Tren for a 38-mile jaunt to Perito Marino. The engine and restored wooden cars, all built in 1912 in Scotland, are well maintained by a preservation society. Unlike La Trochita, this train is appointed with luxurious details rivaling the Orient Express. A major highlight of our trip is a side trip to the Perito Moreno Glacier, one of the fastest moving glaciers in the world.
Our next side trip includes Torres del Pines, a famous national park of valleys, glaciers, and mountains. With all this unspoiled beauty, one could almost envy the life of the Guanacos and the Rias that call this place home. We have just one more memorable destination before we head home. Just outside Ushuaia, the most southern city in the world, El Tren del Fin del Mundo, or Train at the End of the World. In this country of extremes, here's one more. This is the most southern railroad on the planet. The railroad was originally built as a prison railway to haul prisoners to and from um, a detention uh, area to take them out, I believe, probably to logging operations where the prisoners were put to work. And uh, it was abandoned many years ago, but with the sudden growth in the tourist traffic, and that tourist traffic depends heavily on the steamship business, on cruise ships, uh, investors uh, came to the area and rebuilt the railway. And the railway is very, very uh, interesting because, well, first of all, the gauge is only 500 millimeters, which is about 20 inches. So it's a, a true narrow gauge line. But the thing that attracts a lot of people who don't go there simply for tourism is the fact that the railway has two very unusual locomotives. Actually, it has three steam locomotives, and two of those are Garrett-type locomotives, which are articulated locomotives of British design and uh, the boiler is suspended between the forward section, uh, driving section, and the rear driving section. But these are little tiny things. They're 040 plus 040 Garretts. And uh, I must say that's a, a, a rarity. Uh, I only can think of a couple other examples in the world, at least that I've seen in my many years of traveling around and looking at railways. This is one of the most spectacular physical regions in the world. You've got the Andes to the west, you've got this high desert to the east, you've got uh, amazing wildlife, you can see, uh, of course, uh, snow-capped peaks, and then, of course, you have these railroads that bring us here in the first place. Put them all together, and it's one of the most wonderful places in the world to see and to photograph and to ride trains.